What's up YouTube? This is a 2018 McLaren 720S. Show you guys what one of the most common problems is we're seeing on this model right here now some of you guys might already know this is an exhaust manifold more specifically this is a turbocharger manifold for the passenger side of the car what we're seeing on this model right here is the manifold breaks apart at the factory welds and you're allowing unmetered air to get into the exhaust stream and it's getting picked up by the O2 sensors and it's not going to run right like that. So if you start hearing a ticking, a chuffing, a weird exhaust noise on this model right here, make sure you get it checked out before it causes more problems. Now, as you can see, we've got this thing taken pretty far apart. To gain access to this exhaust manifold, you've got to, of course, take off this rear right fender. We have a bunch of panels taken off. There's an intercooler that normally sits here. And of course, we took off the turbocharger. And with all that out of the way, you can get access to the alternator. The spark plugs and ignition coils are pretty easy to get to. Once you get this far, there's a lot that you can gain access to and repair without having to drop out the engine and transmission. Along with that stuff, we have one of the downpipes taken out. The rear air brake is taken out. Uh, let's put this thing up in the air so you can see underneath now. So with the car in the air, you can see what we had to do underneath to get access to everything. We have some panels taken off, of course, and with the turbo out of the way, you can get to the last nuts and bolts on the exhaust manifold up there to take it out. This is what it looks like with the manifold and the turbo out of the way. The worst part about this is probably the fact that we had a couple nuts snap off. That one right there, there's another one up here. And every nut and bolt on the heat shields for the manifold just did not want to cooperate. They either wanted to get seized, break off, or where they screw into is just not holding together. So now that we've shown you how to get to this part, how to remove it and replace it, let's talk about why this failure happened. These are both from two different McLaren 720S's. And ironically, you've got the same failure on the same two runners. You've got, these are broken right here on this one we pulled from the car. This is another one. This one is also broken on only these two runners right here. When you look here, you can see the light coming through where they are clearly broken. This one is not as bad, but if you look really close, you can kind of see the light coming through. Let's zoom in a little bit, and I think you can see it. Yep, so you see the light coming through on that one. Same deal on this one, you can see the light coming through. As you can see, there is a weld in here. So what happens when you are welding is typically this bead that you're laying with the weld is going to be stronger than the rest of the metals around it because you are making it thicker with the welding process. You're adding metal to it and now it is structurally stronger. However, due to the intense heat that you have when you are welding, sometimes the metal right next to the weld can become affected. And as you can see, the weld is okay. It's the metal directly next to that weld bead that is broken all the way around on this runner. Same thing on this one. I'm sure if I clean this up, the bead itself from the weld is okay. It's the metal directly next to it where this broke off all the way around. This one we pulled from the car actually has a window installed. It is broken so badly. It has broken a window through and you could see clear as day right through the manifold now. So that would explain why the client was saying that this engine is making a ticking noise. And you're gonna have some weird noises with this metal being broken when it expands and contracts and it's gonna be giving you weird noises and you're gonna hear an exhaust leak. You might smell the exhaust leaking, but this is a great time to stop driving the car, get it taken into the shop and get this addressed. Now, another thing that I'm noticing on these manifolds is this manifold flange is not perfectly flat. If I put this straight edge up to this manifold, we got it flat down here. But if I look over here, you can clearly see a gap. So let me flatten it on that side. And if you look over here, there's a gap. Same thing on this side with this manifold that we have. You flatten it on this side here, but you look over here, now there's a gap. If I push the straight edge against the flange right there, now we have the gap down here. Now, some guys will say that once you bolt this to the cylinder head with all these studs here, it's naturally gonna flatten out once you push it against the cylinder head. Yes, that is true to a degree, however, I believe that this flange not being perfectly flat is contributing to the fact that these two runners wanna kinda of pull away. 
So once this is bolted down, you know it's probably perfectly flat right here, and these runners are not having any trouble. However, this flange kind of wants to get pulled away, and then through the heat cycles going on with this manifold, because you gotta remember, this is a turbocharger manifold. This thing gets red hot. As much as this octopus looking structure here is probably pretty strong. Unfortunately, when you have this thing expanding from thermal expansion all the time, it contracts when you park the car at the end of the day. In essence, this thing is kind of breathing. Over the years, this thing gets hot, it expands, it cools down, it gets hot the next day, it cools down, it gets smaller. So what's going on here is basically this thing is getting stressed on only these two runners, it appears. So that's what it seems like is going on with these manifolds. Um, I have a date right here, 4518. This leads me to believe it was manufactured the 45th week of 2018. Uh, this one we pulled from the car. 0218, well, I believe that would probably be the second week of 2018. So these may not even be from the same batch of manufacturing. However, it's the same two runners failing on them. The flange is not flat on either one of them and we are having the same problem. So if you call McLaren right now, they're gonna tell you it's about $4,000 for a new one of these manifolds, two weeks shipping from the UK. And the bigger problem is they haven't updated this design. They're gonna sell you the same basic design that's gonna have the same failure, I think in a couple years because they haven't updated the design here. Another thing that I think is happening is there's not a very good brace on this to support the heavy weight of the turbocharger that sits right here. And there is a little brace right here that kind of helps support the weight of the turbocharger. But realistically, not only does this have to function as an exhaust manifold that routes all the exhaust gases, this has also got to support the weight of the turbocharger. The downpipe is connected to the turbocharger after that. So everything needs to be not only airtight, but it has to be structurally sound. So what's happening here is either the structure of this is not planned out very well, you know, and of course they can't plan for everything. As much as this was probably a good design at the factory and everything's perfect at the factory, it's hard for them to know in 10 years from now what kind of failures are gonna happen. But this is something you'll see. You'll start to notice the same kind of failures happen on the same kind of parts on the same kind of cars sometimes. Um, another thing I'm noticing with the flange not being flat on these, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this yet. You may be able to cut this and give this flange a little more of a relaxed nature to it so you don't have to force it flat against the cylinder head when you bolt it down. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet, but basically what I'm leading to is replacing this with a $4,000 manifold that's gonna break again in a few years is not what we wanna do. You know, this is not an easy part to get to. It's not like it's just something that takes an hour or two to replace. So what we're gonna do is probably improve on this existing design. Probably gonna get better results by repairing an existing manifold rather than reinstalling a manifold design that we know is gonna fail. So I'd like to flatten this flange. I'd like to reinforce these welds. As you can see, there's a weld on the inside, but there's no weld on the outside of these. That makes me wonder if this wasn't welded on the outside, if that wouldn't solve a lot of these problems these are having. Next step here is clean this up, fix some of these welds, and reassess how the flange is flat or not, and go from there. Okay, so this is quote unquote the finished product. What we did is we welded all the way around each runner on the outside instead of just relying on the welds from the factory on the inside that are known to crack apart. Um, I will say I am a technician before I am a welder. But I don't dislike how this came out. The only spot that I wasn't able to get all the way around on each runner is this outside one which these don't have a reputation for cracking, this last one here, nor does this one. Really, the reason I wanted to do this all the way around on both sides is, you know, uniformity all the way across, but also I wanna reinforce, you know, these welds now because I think now that these two are gonna be a lot stronger, I don't want these to become the weak ones. So, I got all the way around on this one, except between this brace here and the runner. There's a little spot in there I didn't get. Um, and like I said, these are still welded on the inside just fine. I think the added reinforcement welding these nearly all the way around and this one's welded all the way around 
is going to do everything we need it to do to keep it together for the future. And I think this will hold up longer than it would if we just got a new manifold from McLaren, ironically. So this is what it looks like once this is put back together. Let's put it back in the car, put everything back together. Let's finish up some of the other stuff we were doing on this car. The We've got an oil service on this car. We've got a clutch fluid service on this car. We are still waiting on the clutch fluid to come in. It is a special uh, fluid you can't really get locally. So that is getting shipped in right now. But wanted to show you guys what this is looking like before it goes in the car and it's hidden forever pretty much. Okay, so we have the turbo out and we are addressing some of the broken studs. Um, this is a too abnormal when you are dealing with exhaust components, uh, studs and bolts on turbochargers. These go through such extreme heat cycles that uh, it's not uncommon for these threads to get a little deformed. Uh, and then when you go to take off the nut, you can try as much as you want, but sometimes you just cannot help it. These will break off sometimes. So that's what we're dealing with. We got two that are good and we got two that are broken. Uh, don't fret too hard because usually there's something you could do. We have our box of random bolts here. We found a couple that fit on here. Uh, so I've threaded on, uh, I found one that fits really good. We're gonna put on another one right here that also fits really good. Uh, this is going to, with, with, with studs, what you're gonna do is you're going to basically jam the two nuts together. So I had to force this nut on as far as I could to leave enough threads for another nut to come in to be jammed against each other. Uh, we've got about three, three, two or three threads showing. I'm gonna try to tighten this down a little bit more, get uh, two nuts on there so we could try to unscrew this stud. Okay, so unfortunately that did not work. This stud is so seized that the threads of the nut just strip out when you try to double nut this and uh, unscrew it that way. Uh, looks like we're gonna bust the welder back out, weld this nut to the thread. I'm just gonna do that on this too. Worst case scenario, we'll have to grind off these studs where they're broken off, drill them out and tap new threads into the housing of the turbocharger. I'd like to avoid doing that. So let's hope we can get a good weld on these nuts to this thread and unscrew them that way. Here's a good example. We are getting these red hot. Sometimes welding helps. Uh, the heat can sometimes free the seized threads in there. But time to get this one red hot too and see what we can make happen. All right, first attempt was unsuccessful. We got these super red hot, welded them on there. Uh, went to unscrew them and they just break off. We'll try again. All right, we are making good progress. We got the turbo back in, the heat shields. Uh, currently, we are getting the downpipe put back in. Uh, the oil fill line has got to go back in. We're fixing an oil leak on the dry sump tank in there. But overall, we are making progress. All right, so we got basically all the mechanical pieces back together. New oil filter filled up with oil, pipes, hoses, and tubes all in. We are going to leave this fender off uh, for the first startup. Make sure there's nothing that uh, we missed, but I know we didn't miss anything. And to leave this off in case there's some more work we need to do. Just a contingency overall. Everything went together pretty well. Tomorrow we'll be back, fire this up, and finish this job up.
Kim. Might be kind of loud in here, but the 720S is back up and running. Uh, it, it sounds pretty good. I don't hear any crazy noises. The exhaust leak noise has definitely gone away. Uh, there's no loud ticking like there was before. Give this thing a couple revs now that it's got some oil in it, got some cooling in it. And it's warmed up a little bit. Oh yeah, you can hear those turbos pretty good. All right, now that we are up to 195 degrees on the oil temperature, uh, now it'll let us check the oil level. Uh, these things don't have a dipstick, so this is the only way to check the oil level. You have to basically make sure you have at least enough in here for it to be safe to start up. Let it warm up. And then the countdown timer over here, after you hold the brake and the gas, it'll tell you with the electronic dipstick measurement how much oil is in there. Uh -huh. 